Hello, welcome to Artswarm episode 9. Artswarm is an arts video and audio programme where artists create things around a theme every fortnight and send it to me and I showcase the best creative weirdness in the world. The main criteria is that everything is new, so everything you're about to see has not been aired on the internet before. It's a world premiere. That's what makes Hearts Warm special. This week's theme is rocks. And, well, what do rocks mean to you? Andrew Williams begins with a piece which compares rocks with human beings. It asks questions of rocks in an almost humanistic way and intersperses this with some soothing scenes.
Now, rocks are cold, inorganic things, and so perhaps artistically it's difficult to add emotion to them. Uh, Andrew did that in that last piece by making them almost appear human, asking rocks whether they'd outlast humanity. Um, I wondered how I could do something on rocks, and so I thought of magma and its warm liquidness and how this was like a fluid which pervaded the early universe, gradually solidifying and hardening into planets and hardening into rocks. And I compared this with emotions. with volcanic fury I am reborn energy glow the soul of Genesis this Phoenix origin of life and all things solid I am the core I am the soul I am magma I am love Well, the next Art Swarm episode has a theme of dyslexia, and I thought it'd be fun and interesting to add a few of the dyslexia parts to this episode to shake things up a bit and make it a bit more interesting. This is a poem by Helen Knight, which is all about um, confusion and a fight for clarity. Dazzled, words muddled, blind to the page, trying to read, 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 swirling, changing, letters confusing, interlinking, white and black. I'm blinded by what I see, dyslexia, dyscalcula, dyspraxia, long numbers I can't do, multiplication, division, how, how, how? Mental energy to read, mental energy to calculate, mental energy to make sense of a world of words and numbers, to make sense of what's on the page. Concentrate, girl, you can do it. You can succeed achieving a degree. Science, you understand. Music, beat, art, you can do. But why do words and numbers dazzle, swirl and confuse your eyes and mind? Living with dyspraxia, which affects dyslexia and dyscalcula, but it doesn't matter. 
I am still smart and intelligent. No matter what they say, I will succeed. And this next Rocks Arts Warm piece is a piece of music by Andrew Williams which uses cave noises and drips to make a rather rhythmic soundtrack. I thought this was an interesting comparison to Helen Knight's poem because partly because of the image of a man in a tunnel walking out of a tunnel and I felt it slightly related or connected with the previous poem. And next, a poem which illustrates in words and images a past of shadows and uses shadow puppets itself to aid this. Dab, Latin at the village school, 1969. The school won prizes for calligraphy. A mo. A chain of mop heads lined the desk that hid a mottled row of knuckle knees. A mass. The head dictated bird looked out at naked oaks that clawed a phlegmy cloud. A mat. Tom's pen was harrowing the lines. In crept the demon, Titty Villas. Set to skin Tom's book of words, then tipped the pelts inside his bulging sack. Leaving mere blocks, he shook out his umbrella wings to go. They made Tom stand upon a chair until he wet himself. He learned a new verb, smarto. His brothers ached for help, festered, afraid in scabs of silence. Their dad worked on farms, 
His fist can't dent a teacher's slick defence. Scores of complaints poured in against the head. He was struck off. The tabloids milk the story. Its rumoured spirit smashed his gravestone yearly. Tom is mute, boxed in his barking tractor. A hairy hand has wiped away his version. now an image a painting by Janie Jones which like her previous ones is a very short animation but it's a very unusual image of a red figure holding a baby it's called on the rocks named on the rocks by the artist so interpret this as you will And now an animation by Lavinia Murray which highlights the consequences of a violent game of rock, paper, scissors. Um, originally she wanted to include a damaged rock being operated on by surgeons with tiny chisels and tools like that and she, she a little bit ran out of time but there's certainly elements of the disaster after this rock, paper, scissors game in this. And we end this episode of Art Swarm with another of the dyslexia pieces. This is an autobiographical story by Rosie Pugh. Stand still, Margaret Rose. Let me finish your hair. It's your first day at school. Now stay clean while I go and see to your father. My father was ill in bed with pleurisy, so I was being sent to school before my time, so mum could look after him. I was between three and four. 
I remember clutching my mother's hand as we reached the big grey building. We were approached by a person dressed in black with a black veil that hung from her head with a white piece around her face. Heavy beads hung from her waist with a cross hanging at the end. She was called a nun. Names I don't remember except my music teacher, Sister Domlick, but that's another story. My free hand was suddenly in hers as she started to take me away from my mother, who had to let go of me. Fear was in my heart as I sat there amongst the older children waiting. I was given chalk and a small slate to draw on. Suddenly a bell rang and it was time to go out to play. The school play area was large and grey and there was a cloakroom at the end where coats were hung. I followed the other children and somehow I found myself locked in the cloakroom by other children on my own. How was I to get out for I wanted to go home and find my friend Eamon and help him to milk the cows. He would go without me. I loved the fields and the cows. I remember seeing the open window and climbed, pushing myself through the gap and following onto the cold grey concrete yard. With ripped dress and blood running down my knees, I ran out of the schoolyard and made my way home. I was frightened, but knew I had to leave this place. After some time, I reached home with some help, as most of the local people knew me. My mother was very cross with me, and she gave me a good scolding. I tried telling her what had happened, but looking back, she was probably more worried about me getting knocked down. And that's it for episode nine of Art Swarm with our theme of rocks. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is Mark Sheeky, and you can connect with Art Swarm on Twitter at Art Swarm TV. If you'd like to create something for Art Swarm, you can find the Art Swarm page on MarkSheeky.com. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you for the next Art Swarm show, which is a special with the theme of dyslexia. <laughs>